Hey guys, Bingo Cat here, and today we are going to be comparing Windows 10 versus Windows 11. So for those of you who don't know, Windows 10 is the successor to Windows 8.1, which was the successor to Windows 8, which was the successor to Windows 7. And Windows 8, the main thing that made it a bit different from Windows 7 was with Windows 8, Microsoft saw the rise of iPads and Android tablets at the time. And they decided um, they also wanted an operating system for tablets. And so what they decided to do was make the user interface for Windows 8 very friendly for touch screens. As a result, that made the user interface less friendly for keyboard and mice users. And at the time, most Windows users had computers that did not have a touch screen. So Microsoft tried to make Windows a little easier to use for keyboard and mouse users by releasing Windows 8.1. And what that did was that made several changes to the user interface of Windows, such as adding uh, the start button back to the taskbar, which was not present in Windows 8. So Windows 10 was actually originally supposed to just be another update to Windows 8.1. And what Microsoft decided to do instead of releasing that as an update, they decided to just turn that into an entirely new operating system. So the first build released to the public for Windows 10 was released in October 2014, and the operating system as a whole was released to the general public in July of 2015. Windows 11, on the other hand, also originally started out as just another update to the currently released version of Windows. It was supposed to just be an update to Windows 10 called Windows 10 Sun Valley. And Microsoft at the time was actually working on a separate version of Windows called Windows 10 X. Windows 10 X was supposed to run on dual screen devices and featured a slightly redesigned user interface for Windows. Long story short, Windows 10 X was canceled and the work that had gone into designing a new user interface for Windows 10 X kind of actually got brought over to what would eventually become Windows 11. So Microsoft released the first build of Windows 11 in June 2021, and the operating system was released to the general public in October 2021. So one of the main controversies surrounding Windows 11 was that the system requirements to run Windows 11 were a bit different than the system requirements required to run Windows 10. So Windows 10 system requirements is that it needs a one gigahertz or faster compatible processor, one gigabyte of RAM for the 32-bit version of Windows 10 or two gigabytes for the 64-bit version of Windows 10. It needs a 32 gigabyte or larger hard disk. Windows 11 system requirements. The CPU is also a one gigahertz or faster processor, but what is a big deal is Microsoft upped the minimum CPUs that you could use to run Windows 11. So CPUs that could run Windows 10 actually dates all the way back to late 2003. Windows 11, on the other hand, you can only use CPUs that date back to late 2017, which when Windows 11 was first released in October 2021, that meant that the oldest compatible CPUs, which were Intel's eighth generation of processors, were only a maximum of four years old. So comparing that to Windows 10, where when it was released, you could run it on CPUs as old as almost 12 years, that is quite the change. RAM for Windows 11 has also been increased from Windows 10. Microsoft now recommends that you have four gigabytes of RAM to run Windows. Storage is also increased from Windows 10. Windows 11 requires 64 gigabytes of storage space or larger. And Microsoft also requires you to have something called Trusted Platform Module 2.0. Before even doing this video, I would say if you have a compatible computer from late 2017 or newer, you might as well just use Windows 11 because support for Windows 10 ends in October 2025, which is only about a year away. So I have Windows 10 and Windows 11 running here in VMware. I gave them both pretty much the same specs and we are just going to go ahead and turn both of these operating systems on and just kind of go through the operating system.
So I have them both set up to automatically log into Windows and I am not signed in with a Microsoft account to either operating system. So some features will be unavailable, but that's okay. So just looking at the desktop for both operating systems, they're both very blue. And Windows 10's default desktop is a wallpaper that has the Windows logo. Where Windows 11's, on the other hand, is something a little different. This is actually called Bloom. This is the dark mode version of this wallpaper. And if we were to go ahead and take a look at the wallpapers, there's also a light mode version of this wallpaper, which is the actual default. Where Windows 10, on the other hand, just has this, uh, just has this wallpaper that doesn't have a dark mode version but it's worth noting that the default color mode for each operating system is actually both light mode but i prefer dark mode because it is a little easier on the eyes in my opinion so i'm going to turn them back to dark mode and it's worth mentioning that the windows 10 original wallpaper was actually a real picture that was taken and was not computer generated where this version of the wallpaper, which was released in 2019, does look computer generated. I'm not sure why they decided to replace the wallpaper with this one. I think this one does look a bit cleaner and more modern, but the novelty of the original wallpaper, whereas actually a real picture, was actually pretty cool. So one of the first things you'll notice that's different between Windows 10 and Windows 11 is that the search box and the start button for Windows 11 actually is centered compared to how in Windows 10 it's actually left aligned. And there's no way to center this um, in the settings in Windows 10, but Windows 11 actually does allow you to put both the start button and the search box back on the left corner of the screen, which is how I prefer it. Now, when you open up the start menu for both operating systems, they both look a little different. So Windows 10, they decided to just make it so when you clicked on the start button, it would actually just bring up your list of apps by default. And besides that, they also kept the live tiles from Windows 8, which for those of you who don't know, was an interesting idea where the idea was instead of just having a static icon, it could actually display different information on the icon. Like if you had a weather live tile, for instance, it could actually show you the temperature and the icon versus just being a static weather icon. But Microsoft decided to get rid of that in Windows 11 in favor of just having a big area where you have a bunch of different applications pinned. And you would also have recommended applications and files and they made it so if you want to see all your applications you have to do what you did in windows 7 and xp and just click on a button to view all your applications my opinion kind of a downgrade compared to windows 10 but it is what it is you'll also notice how on the windows 10 start menu it has um, links to things like your settings and uh, your username uh, your documents your pictures folder where the Windows 11 start menu, it does actually have a settings button here, but you can actually unpin this and have no quick way to access your settings. And you can actually add buttons down here to uh, make it so you actually have a quick uh, access icon to settings, but by default, it's not there. So you'll notice if we actually go and look at all the taskbar options, you'll notice that the Windows 10 uh, taskbar. It actually allows you to do things like make the icons in the taskbar smaller or move the taskbar to the top of the screen or even like the right or left side of your screen if you really want. In Windows 11, even if you go under taskbar behaviors here, you can't put the taskbar at the top of the screen or on the right or left side of the screen. You can, like I said, go ahead and just align all the icons to the left, which is how I typically prefer it. But otherwise, the Windows 11 taskbar is actually a little less customizable than the Windows 10 taskbar, which is disappointing. So you'll notice that the system tray slash notification area at first glance looks similar for both operating systems. It's actually just a little bit different. So like you'll notice when I click on the volume icon for Windows 10, it just brings up the volume slider. Where Windows 11, on the other hand, you'll notice they seem to combine both the network uh, indicator and the volume indicator together. And when you click it, it actually brings up a panel here where it allows me to do things like connect to Bluetooth. And then each operating system also has its own notification area 
where Windows 10 actually has a link to a bunch of like quick toggles here. You will notice that's not present in the same spot on Windows 11, where Windows 11 you have to click where the volume indicator is. On Windows 10 you actually click where the notification icon is. And you'll notice by default that Windows 11 came with an icon for Copilot, and Windows 10 actually has Copilot too, but for some reason I don't seem to have it on my version of Windows 10. So you'll notice that both operating systems have these other icons on the taskbar where Windows 10 right now is currently displaying the weather, where Windows 11 is displaying things related to the Olympics, where when you click on it, it brings up like all these news stories and stuff like that that I don't really care about, but you actually can just get rid of these and just have other widgets like things regarding sports or weather or traffic or the stock market and things like that. So you can customize that a little bit. You'll notice that each operating system has its own search bar on the taskbar where you can do things like search for files or you can search for other things. And you can also get um, web results show up, which, you know, when I'm searching for something on my computer, I actually like finding things on my computer and not just random stuff from the internet, but that's just my opinion, of course. Let's just take a look at File Explorer for both operating systems. So when you open it up, first thing you'll notice about the Windows 11 File Explorer is that it actually allows you to have multiple tabs in File Explorer like web browsers do, where Windows 10 does not have tabs in its version of File Explorer. So if we take a look at the default web browser for both operating systems, both Windows 10 and Windows 11 come with Microsoft Edge, which ever since Microsoft Edge switched to using Chromium. Microsoft Edge is actually not that bad of a browser. It is not based on any of the uh, garbage that made Internet Explorer the garbage web browser that it was. So this is actually based on Chromium, which is what Google Chrome uses. So Microsoft Edge, just from a technology perspective at actually just displaying modern web pages is actually pretty good. If we take a look at the settings app for both operating systems, you'll notice that they do look a little different by default. With Windows 10, what they were trying to do was actually start moving settings out of the control panel into the settings app to make it so you can access your settings in a more modern looking application. And Windows 11 changed the way the settings app looked and continued to do what Windows 10 was already doing, which is just moving settings out of the control panel into the settings app. Now, if we take a look at the default applications that come with Windows 10 and Windows 11, you may notice that like for Windows 10 here, how there's a uh, link to Spotify and same thing in Windows 11, where you may notice that if you go and view uh, all apps in both operating systems, you don't actually see Spotify installed there. And that's because Microsoft, what they decided to do for both Windows 10 and Windows 11 was just pin some things to your start menu by default where a lot of people including me use Spotify so why not just have a link that will open the Microsoft Store to help you go and get Spotify. Um, but you'll notice that like Spotify and several of these applications here aren't actually installed on your system by default. So if we were to take a look at the default applications for both operating systems, you may notice that um, there are things that both operating systems have like Cortana, which is not even supported anymore and for some reason is still included in both Windows 10 and Windows 11. A lot of the same applications that do run on Windows 11 also run on Windows 10 and vice versa. And you'll notice that Windows 10 has a tool called the Snip and Sketch tool, which is basically just a newer version of the snipping tool, which Windows 10 also still has. Where Windows 11, on the other hand, uh, it essentially has an updated version of the Snip and Sketch tool, but they just renamed it back to Snipping Tool. And Windows 11 no longer has the old-fashioned Snipping Tool. So at the end of the day, I think I actually do prefer Windows 11 over Windows 10 just because I like the way it looks a little bit better and I appreciate things like tabs and file explorer and that really the main case where you'd want to use Windows 10 is if you have a computer um, from before late 2017 
where Windows 11 is not officially compatible on the computer. So what do you all think? Did I miss something with Windows 10 versus Windows 11? Do you have a preference which one you like better? Let me know in the comments down below and make sure to check me out on other social media platforms linked down below in the video description. As always, I thank you guys for watching. Goodbye.